you have a whole hour here to be with your breath, to be with your mind. And you want to make the most of it. It's very rare that we get a chance to have just these two things here with no other responsibilities. And you find that you begin the hour by talking to yourself. Well, make the talk in line with the principles of right speech. In other words, true, beneficial, and timely. And beneficial here means basically leading to stillness to the point where you don't have to talk to yourself. But in the beginning stages, you do have to talk. It's what's called directed thought and evaluation. That's how you get the mind snug with its object, how you get the object just right for the mind. You're focusing on the breath. Where do you feel the breath right now? Do you know when it's coming in? Do you know what's going out? Does it feel comfortable? If it's not comfortable, this is where you start talking to yourself. What can you do to make it more comfortable? Is the breathing too long? Is it too short? Is it too heavy? Too light? Too fast? Too slow? What kind of image do you hold in mind when you think about the breath? Because when we talk about focusing on the breath, it's not so much the air coming in and out through the nose. It's more the sensation of energy throughout the body. In some places it's clearer than others. The energy that allows the air to come in allows it to go out. Where do you sense that energy? Focus there. And allow it to have some freedom. Don't clamp down on it, because that'll make things uncomfortable and it's not going to be pleasant to be here. The whole purpose of this is to get the mind in a comfortable place. Give it something comfortable to focus on, so it will be happy to stay here in the present moment. And if you've noticed that it's wandered off, just nudge it right back. Drop whatever thought led you away, and you'll be right back with a breath. When you come back, reward yourself with a really nice breath. What would feel really good right now, deep down inside? And keep it up. So this is speech that is true, beneficial, and timely. Now it helps if you've been adhering to the principles of right speech as you go through the day. Because otherwise you have your mind full of all kinds of chatter right now. Talking about 108,000 different things during the day, you'll have 108,000 different things to clear out of the mind. So it's good to remember that the meditation is not just a technique you follow when you're sitting here with your eyes closed. You have to create the right environment. And again, the main way you create your environment for the mind is through your speech. So be very careful as you go through the day. Make sure that what you say is true, and it's actually beneficial for the people who are listening. The idea that you just want to express your thoughts or express your feelings. That doesn't have any room here. We're in a monastery where words have an impact on everybody around you. They're trying to keep their minds still, so you want your words to be helpful, because that's what beneficial means right now. Of course, in the course of the day there will be other issues that come up, but you want your speech to lean toward stillness. That's when you're talking to yourself right now. You adjust the breath. Why? Because you want the breath to be a place where it's really easy to stay and just not have to think about it anymore. And that's when you can put all this internal chatter aside. Think about the Buddha's description of the time when he found the path. He finally got on the path and he started looking at his thoughts, not so much as to whether he liked them or not. 
he thought about what the impact the, these thoughts have on his mind and through his mind on his actions and words. He found that there were two sorts, thoughts that led to skillful states of mind and thoughts that led to unskillful states of mind. For the unskillful ones, he would said he would hold them in check. He would make sure that he wouldn't go with thoughts of sensuality, thoughts of ill will, thoughts of cruelty. These things are not beneficial to anybody. As for thoughts of renunciation, thoughts of non-ill will, i.e. good will, thoughts of compassion, these were things that he would allow his mind to think. But even then he noticed that you could think about these things all day and they wouldn't lead to any unskillful actions, but they would tire the mind. So he inclined his mind into concentration. So that thinking of inclining his mind into concentration, that was a kind of internal speech. But a speech leading in the right direction. So you want your speech to be speech that leads to stillness, speech that leads to harmony, speech that leads to peace, both inside and out. That's the right use of our human ability to talk. You look around you and you see so many bad examples in, throughout society and the media. They actually pay people to be hateful. They pay them to incite people in all kinds of unskillful ways. And as a result, what do we see? The society falls apart. People can't talk to one another. So if you're going to speak, make sure that the speech is actually useful, leads to peace, leads to harmony. And it's a kind of speech that has an end point. I talked about Ananda. The Buddha was talking about Ananda's fine qualities as a monk. And one of his qualities that he would speak to the point, answer people's questions, and then stop speaking before they got tired of hearing him. And one of the ideal qualities of a monk who looks for seclusion is someone who will answer people's questions and answer in such a way that they will be satisfied enough to go away. So our speech is not meant to be tying people here or tying people to us. It's meant to meet their needs and then stop. So there's good internal speech, good external speech, especially while we're here at a, at a monastery. We don't have a rule of silence here, so you have to be very careful about how you use your mouth. One of the first lessons I got from a John Fu, he says, if you can't control your mouth, how are you going to control your mind? So think very carefully about what you're going to say. There's that old Peanuts cartoon where Lucy this is, says, people complain that I talk too much, that I should watch what I say. But if you go around watching what you say all the time, you never get much said. Of course, that's the whole point. You want your words to be useful. You want them to be true, beneficial, timely. And you want them to be few enough so that they have a lot of value. Remember, the valuable things in the world are the things that are hard to find. That don't, there's not too much of them. So try to keep your speech under control, and that way you help other people keep their speech under control. And also, everybody gets to keep their minds more under control. Because getting the mind to stillness is not an easy thing. It's so used to talking to itself all the time. Ever since we learned language, we've been wanting to learn more and more and more language. Not really realizing that once you get the mind into language, it's, an, it's like setting it on fire. The fire just spreads and spreads and spreads. We keep talking to ourselves all the time, even when we don't have to. 
but you want to get the mind as you meditate to a place where you talk to it in a way that brings it to stillness, and then the talking stops. If you find that you can't stay with the breath, try to think about themes that help you want to stay with the breath. If you're feeling lazy, you can think a little bit about death. Death could come at any time. After all, we're here in California. The earthquakes, who knows when the big one is going to come. If you're feeling down on yourself, try to think about the good things you've done. The ways you've been generous when you didn't have to be. When you were virtuous and you didn't have to be. Remind yourself that you've got value to yourself. You've got your own inner goodness. You're a worthwhile person. When thinking in these ways gives rise to a sense of well-being, okay, then you can drop the thinking, drop the talking, and just go into that sense of well-being. Notice how the breath is when it feels good in the body. Then you can put all that inner talking aside. So those are the three qualities you want to look for in speech. One is that it's true. Two is that it's beneficial. Three, that it's timely. Any speech that's outside of these is something you want to avoid. And this applies both to your external speech and to the speech that you're engaging in right now as you try to get the mind to settle down.